We have explored every Nuka World park so far except the Galactic Zone, which is the most sprawling and complex park in the entire game. I'm playing on my sneaky stealth railroad assassin character, and she's only level 35, making her a bit young to comfortably clear the park. But I'm gonna try anyway. You see, I've got a strategy. I'm gonna wear my Chinese stealth armor and use railroad stealth boys where necessary to sneak through the park and shut down all of the robots instead of combating them. It'll be tricky, but if successful, once I restore power to the park, I'll be able to reactivate all of them and they'll be friendly, which will make the park feel alive. If we head that way from Dry Rock Gulch, we arrive at the park's northern entrance. We see a strange sight, what appears to be some sort of scrap shack wall hastily erected outside the park. Upon approaching, we begin the quest Star Control, and we see the aftermath of a battle right outside the door to the Galactic Zone. And lying on the stairs, we find the corpse of Tiana Alston, surrounded by her own blood and with a 10mm pistol still in hand. On her corpse is Tiana's log. Hard to read when activating it in stealth, so finding some cover, we can open it up in our Pip-Boy. To read it, we find two entries. The first was written on April 8th, 2286. Dad said we're heading out to the Galactic Zone again tomorrow. I'm still not sure how I feel about these salvage runs. It's amazing to see how much of the old tech still works. I wish I could stay and study it all, but Dad's crew is just there to rip it apart and haul it back for scrap. As if the world didn't have enough rusted metal and broken circuit boards already. At least I only have to take half shifts. I'm looking forward to getting back to my work on Star Control. I just hope the old mainframe is still running. The next entry is on April 12th. It's all my fault. I told him. I told him there weren't enough cores left to turn it on. If he had waited an hour, we could have pulled them from around the zone, gotten star control back up and running. I already had people looking. I could have made it work, but he wouldn't listen. He wouldn't listen. And now, God, I hope he's all right. I can hear the screams. We're going to wait for nightfall, then make a run for the gate. Well, she didn't make it. And judging by the battle scene outside, she and her scavengers were attacked by the park's robots. We can loot their wreckage nearby and the corpses of the other traitors. They had machine gun turrets and robots on their side, an Assaultron and a Protectron, and they still died. These Galactic Zone robots must be really formidable. Heading inside the park, we awaken one of them. Backing up, we can wait for it to lose our scent. And when we're hidden, we can sneak up behind it. This is a Nucatron Watcher, and using our robotic expert perk, we'll go ahead and hack it to deactivate it. But we see two iBots coming this way. Sneaking in and trying to find cover, we can wait for them to walk by. They both head towards the entrance where we just came from. As we hide behind the map to the park, one of them sniffs us out. After deactivating it, we can sneak towards the other, <laughs> but it finds us. Thankfully, we can still deactivate it in time. We see two paths before us, a ramp going off to the south and a doorway to the east. On a nearby signpost, we see Star Control and Nuka Galaxy up the ramp and Battle Zone through the doorway. While well, Tiana's log said something about Star Control, perhaps that's the secret to deactivating these robots, so we'll head that way first. Heading up the ramp, we see a Protectron walking around and a Nukatron defender around the corner. Come in. Ooh. Managed to deactivate it just in time, but an iBot found us. And then another one sniffs us out. After shutting both of them down and waiting for our sneak meter to go down, we can crawl back up. At the top, we see some sort of vendor stand with a Protectron walking about, and we see movement from a tower off to the south. Looks like there's another Protectron up that scaffolding. Well, there's nothing for it. Jumping into this vendor stall, we can hack the Protectron. Yourself. After disabling it, we can look around. We see a mannequin displaying some of the park's unique gear. We can walk away with a t-shirt and jeans from here. Looks like the Protectron from the scaffolding lost our scent, so we can loot this place. We find some Nuka-Cola Victory, Cherry, and Wild in a nearby dispenser, and we see something called Splashdown nearby. If it was an attraction, it appears to no longer work. It's now just covered in sewage-filled water. Near to this is a souvenir stand, and next to it is a gate. 
Behind the gate, we see one of these operational kiosks, and inside, we find our first Star Core. These are what Tiana said that she needed to gain control of Star Command. We've already found a few in the other parks we've explored, but the bulk of the Star Cores we'll find are in Galactic Zone, so we need to keep our eyes open. After looting a duffel bag nearby, we can head on out. And we find the corpse of a traitor lying against the vendor stall where we deactivated the Protectron. On the ground near to her is Emerson's holotape. Kendall screwed us all. We only needed an hour or two to round up the cores, but that bastard wouldn't wait. I barely made it to my first console when I heard the shots. Defensive mode. And without the cores, he can't control it. Now I'm pinned down behind some godforsaken concession stand. I don't know what happened to the others. Unlike Coulter's gangs, these robots don't sleep. There's no way out. It's just a matter of time before they find me. So the cores are the key to getting control of these robots, but right now they're all set to defensive mode. Behind us is something called Nuka Galaxy, and in front of us is Arcjet G-Force. I was wary of this Protectron we saw up on the stairs, so we'll head to Arcjet G-Force first to deactivate it. Peering through the entrance, oh, we see another one on this ground level. It's doing a bit of a perimeter sweep. I wanted to see if there was a way I could sneak behind this guy. So going around to the south, we do find a gap, but this leads nowhere. But we hear that other Protectron walking above us. We need to make sure to avoid his attention for now. Heading back to the entrance, his back is to us, so we can quickly move forward to hack him. After deactivating this guy, we can explore this little line. We see a skeleton in the corner. He's just surrounded by Nuka Kid tickets. And now we need to scale the scaffolding. Looks like the Protectron is on the level just above us, but off in the distance we see an iBot patrolling. We'll have to keep to the shadows to avoid tipping him off. Climbing up to the second level, looks like the Protectron has moved to the third. And if we're quick enough, Unidentified. we can hack him and deactivate him. But oh no! Oh, looks like I deactivated him right in this doorway and I can't get past. We see a button on the ground nearby. Is there an elevator we can activate? But before we can activate it, we have to wait until this iBot loses our scent. With the coast clear, we can try and push the button, but nothing happens. It must not be activated. Well, there's only one thing for it. We have to reactivate this Protectron, wait for him to move, and then hopefully hack him quickly enough to avoid being hurt. Law-abiding citizens will not be harmed. Commencing attack. <laughs> Well, I think he got one hit on me, but we're still breathing. Heading up to the next level, we see that iBot patrolling some sort of ramp, but it quickly turns around and scoots away. We'll leave him there for now. Heading up these stairs, we see that it climbs and climbs and climbs. At the very top, we find a console and inside, our second star core. Two down, God knows how many more to go. And at the top, we find an elevator or a ride. Is this some sort of ride? There are seats inside and a whole bunch of skeletons. Did these guys die to the fallout or did the ride somehow malfunction? Well, we can find out by flipping the nearby circuit breaker. Ah! Wow! Cool! Oh! Okay, it malfunctioned. Oh, thankfully we are none the worse for wear, but it sure did rattle around all those skeletons. Well, it brought us down to this ground floor level, but we succeeded. We deactivated all the robots there. To move forward, let's head towards this Nuka Galaxy. We can enter it by opening a big double door to the west. On the other side, we see that we've entered one of the park's attractions. We hear an announcer telling the story of this attraction over the loudspeaker. The colony on Cola 5 is under attack. Repeat. The colony on Cola 5 is under attack. Enemy forces are moving to attack the colony. We have confirmed reports of multiple hostiles. Move to red alert. Deploy all fighters. Cadets report to the launch bay. Cadets to the launch bay. All pilots get to your ships. Prepare for takeoff. Squads 3, 4, 5. You are go for launch. We're getting reports of orbital strikes. They can't hold out much longer. We see three robots patrolling the line to the north. 
Oh dear, <laughs> this is gonna be tricky, okay. Waiting until two have moved on, we can stick to the shadows as best we can and hack the Mr. Frothy by the trash cans. After disabling him, another one sneaks behind us. Moving quickly, we can deactivate him. Heading back to the shadows, we can turn around to see the other one looking for us. He also goes towards this door, and with his back turned, we can hack him as well. Okay, looks like the coast is clear. Now to explore this room a little bit more. We can't get through this doorway, we've blocked it with robots, but we can loot a Nuka Cola from the dispenser, and then move towards the middle where we find a skeleton next to a toolbox, but then... Oh, turrets! Oh. <sighs> Well, we can't hack turrets, so looks like I'll have to do some killing. Trying again, we can disable the robots, and when done, we can back up to snipe off the turret. All pirates get With the turret dead, we can loot its wreckage. And moving to the north, we see a doorway into an adjacent room. But here we find a Nukatron. Moving quickly, we can hack it before it attacks. After looting some Nuka Cherry in the nearby dispenser, we can move to some rubble to the north where we find a Nuka Cola and a cooler. There are a few skeletons in this rubble and a cap stash. This was part of the line and it connects to the adjacent room with that door that we blocked with the deactivated Mr. Frothies. Heading up the stairs and peering through our scope, we see two Protectrons, what are those things? We'll have to find a way to deactivate them. And to the north on a pedestal, we see the Nuka Girl. Cadets, I'm Nuka Girl, ace pilot. You ready for your first combat mission? Stick with me and we can take on the galaxy. Sounds like we've got a colony to defend. Let's go. The launch bay is just up ahead. Get to your ships. Looks like in addition to being a Nuka-Cola mascot, she's a space explorer. I wonder what degree she had to get for that. Nearby, we can pick a novice-locked footlocker, and after looting it, we can head up the ramp to the south. But the Protectrons catch us. Racing back and hiding behind a corner, we can wait until our caution meter goes down. If I'm careful and I stick to the shadows, I may be able to sneak up there without being detected. We see that these modified Protectrons are called Galactron Guardians. They're still looking for us, but maybe... Yes, we can hack it through the window. One down, but the other one... I just can't seem to tag him through this window. But if I angle it just right... There we go. Both deactivated. But we can't climb through these windows, so we need to turn west and head through this door. In the next room, we see another Galactron walking around, and two Mr. Handys on the floor. There's plenty of darkness over here, so hopping over the barricade, we can jump down and deactivate the first one. Then sneaking by this rocket car, we can deactivate the second one. We must have timed it just right, because the Galactron Guardian chose this moment to walk up the ramp, giving us ample opportunity to sneak up behind him and deactivate him. With this room clear, we can stand up. There's a lunch pail behind one of the consoles, and then a little control kiosk near the tracks. Inside, we find a tool case, some Nuka-Cola orange, and the Nuka Galaxy control terminal. We see a warning message that there's been a malfunction. It normally comes equipped with a track clearing system, but this is offline. But it looks like if we restore main power to the park, we can get it working again. I did a video where I showed off this ride fully functional, which you can watch here. But for now, we need to toggle the lighting controls. We see that emergency lighting is currently enabled, but we don't want that. We want it to be as dark as possible, so we're going to turn this onto ride lighting. This should make some of the places deeper on a little darker, making it easier for us to sneak on by. Outside of this kiosk, we find a master locked door directly behind us. After picking it, we find an explosives box on the ground, a first aid kit on the wall, and a novice locked toolbox. We see a door to the west, but it looks like this is where the ride ends. Well, I want to explore this in the order it was intended, so for now we're going to turn back around and head west. We see that the ride goes through an archway labeled Airlock 3, but it's blocked right now with a ruined ride car. So instead, we'll open the nearby door. Oh! <laughs> I thought it was deactivated, but apparently it was in standby mode, so hacking this Galactron, we can turn it off, but then we gotta hack the nearby Cadet Astro Gutsy. Once both are deactivated, we can loot this room, where we find our next Star Core. This is one of seven that we find here in Nuka Galaxy. After looting this small room, including a wall-mounted safe, we can open a door to the north. 
This leads to an employee access staircase, which brings us to the ground floor of the ride. I wanted to see if I could go down the track, but we find the track blocked with a security door, and we don't find any way to open it, so our only path forward is down the employee access staircase. We don't see any enemies yet, so I feel safe having my torch on. We don't see a whole lot on this ground level, Taking some steps to the south, we can climb to the top, where we see that the ride goes out a gap to the north. But behind a planet up here, we find a fusion core, some 2mm electromagnetic cartridges, and the skeleton of a man clutching a duffel bag filled with gear. After looting, we can go back down the steps, turn off our light, and open a northern door. This leads to a utility room. Ooh. And we see two alien turrets in their charging pods. Well, they don't seem to notice me yet. Maybe they're not activated. I'm going to keep to the shadows just in case. Creeping up close to them, yeah, they appear to not be active. Heading on over to this table, we can loot a toolbox and some minor scrap on top of it. But as soon as we hit the light... Uh-oh. They were not deactivated. But we can't hack them, so our only option is to destroy them. With the alien turrets gone, we can continue by going out a door to the north. There's an empty metal box here. Going up a ramp, we find a duffel bag with minor loot inside, and then we can open a door to another floor. We hear laser fire. We see some Mr. Handies up on some scaffolding ramps, but what are they shooting at? It looks like they're shooting their lasers at these big floating rocks. This must be part of the attraction. I guess we are supposed to assume that these are robots mining for ore in space? They haven't noticed me yet. We gotta find a way to get up there to deactivate them before they attack us. Looks like there are two of them. Moving along to the north, I tried to hack this guy from this level down here, but I couldn't do it. So waiting until his back is turned, we can head up the stairs and hack him. With this guy deactivated, we can turn around, head up the stairs, Oh, and there are two up there. One turned around to come down the stairs, so heading back down, we can wait for him to pass. With him deactivated, we can head up the stairs and sneak behind the third one while his back is turned. Doing a quick sweep to make sure there are no ceiling-mounted turrets. All right, I think the coast is clear so we can stand up and turn on our light. We don't find much on this scaffolding, so heading down, we can peer over the ledge. That's where the ride continues. But instead of jumping down, we'll head to the west and go around. Here we find a staircase. And at the very bottom, we find an advanced locked toolbox with minor loot inside. But just then... Two Galactrons emerge from their charging docks behind us. Thankfully, we are well concealed in the shadows. Good thing we turned off the emergency lighting. We can simply wait for them to walk on by and hack them as they do. With these guys deactivated, we can explore. We find the corpse of a traitor behind some of the props, and on the ground next to her is a stash of caps. With this level explored, we can go outdoors to the south, but we see a Mr. Handy. Uh-oh, and our light was on, so he saw us. Waiting here until he emerges. We can snag him just in the nick of time. Continuing south down the hallway, we find a console to the east where we find our second star core. We can loot a lunch pail and a trash can, and here we find another Nuka Galaxy control terminal, but it has all the same stuff as the last one, so we'll just go ahead and leave it alone for now. There's an automatic laser pistol on this console, and then at the top of the nearby stairs we find a wooden crate. It's really dark without the emergency lights on, so we'll turn on a light just to get our bearings before heading down and going through a door. On the other side, we see a spaceship. Oh, and it lights up. Creeping forward, we see a long fall before us, and it looks like there are turrets on the spaceship. We'll go ahead and take these out. With the threat gone, we can turn on our light, and peering to the west, we see another ledge. Hopping on over, we can loot the laser turrets and we find another corpse. This traitor was holding onto a duffel bag with more minor loot inside. Well, from here we could drop to our death, but instead of doing that, let's hop on over to the other ledge and continue through the eastern door. We find ourselves in another utility room and after looting these containers, we can head down some stairs to the south. 
At the very bottom, we see an elevator to the left, and on a cart nearby is a novice locked toolbox. After looting, we see that this catwalk ends at another long drop, but there is a platform to the south. I wonder if we time it just right. Oh, ho, ho, ho. and we don't drop to our death. Opening the door leads to another large room. I don't think I want to go there just yet. Turning around, we see a button. Oh, okay. It activates a bridge. Well, instead of going into that room, I want to make sure we don't miss anything, so we'll tag the elevator button for now. We can open a hatch in the top, but looks like there's nothing up there. So pushing a button, we can take the elevator all the way down to the ground floor. Plan escape set. North entrance. We find ourselves in a pitch black room beneath the tracks. I don't see any enemies, so I'm gonna go ahead and risk a light. There are big shipping containers and piles of garbage to the north. Behind one of the shipping containers, we find a master locked safe with quite a stash of goods inside. After looting the safe and a nearby tool chest, we can continue south. Something's going on down there but it sounds like they're not shooting at us. Looting a nearby shelf of a blood pack and another toolbox, we can continue through a door to the south. And we observe a firefight going on between a sentry bot, a protectron, and some of those alien laser turrets. <laughs> well, we'll just let them work their issues out. Heading down the stairs while they're fighting, we find another console with the third star core. Taking the stairs to the bottom, we can watch as these guys finish fighting. Uh, is that sentry bot coming this way? Yeah, he's coming this way. Oh, and the explosion takes out the alien turrets. I think this is supposed to be some sort of alien planet. We can loot the nearby wreckage and fever blossoms. Looks like there's some sort of survey device here. Earthlings had planted a flag on this planet but just then we hear another firefight break out. Well, we'll let them do their thing for now. We see a locked box to the south, but there's nothing inside. And then opening a door to this bunker leads to a cement wall. So this was just a prop. The firefight continues to rage on the other side of this rock. And we see a Galactron about to self-destruct. Oh, and it's running this way. Oh, the firefight continues to rage. Must be another robot back there. Sure enough, we see a Novatron attacking those alien turrets. Those alien turrets must be really powerful. Hiding behind this rocket, we can try to take a couple out. We get one, but we can't reach the other, so heading around to the other side of the rocket. Oh, that Assaultron's coming this way. Ah! With the robots gone, we can pick off the last alien turret. There's a floating spaceship. Don't see any turrets on it, though. So when confident we are safe, we can loot the wreckage. After looting, we can head out a door to the west. This room appears to be safe, so turning on our light, we can head north where we find a wooden crate with chems and explosives inside, and then continue west down the hall. We see an out-of-order elevator and then stairs leading up. There's a novice-locked tool chest next to some of these crates with minor goods inside. And then beneath the stairs, hiding amongst the crates, we find the corpse of another trader. Next to her body is an ammo crate and some 308 rounds. Heading up the stairs, we see a Galactron patrolling above. Creeping up, we can deactivate it. There's an advanced locked footlocker nearby with a bowler hat and fusion cores inside, a nice stack of three. Turning off our light, we can head up to the next level. About halfway up, we stop because we see the glow of a wall-mounted turret. Intruder detected. Beginning search. Oh, but did we not get them all? Oh, there's the other. <sighs> Another glorious day in the U.S. Army. Sounds like there are more robots at the top of the stairs. After looting the wreckage, we continue to climb the stairs until we come out into another large room. The track sneaks around these planets, but we see some stairs nearby with a skeleton dangling over them. Heading up the stairs. Oh, what's that? Another turret. 
Something else is back there. We need to be careful. At the top of these stairs, we can loot another star core. This is star core number four. Three more to go. And then we can loot a tool case. The door nearby leads to a room completely blocked with wreckage. So to continue, we need to head down the stairs and move north. Heading up some stairs to the next platform, we see another turret on a spaceship. And then creeping around a corner, we find another one. Better run, you cummy loving bastard! Oh, and a third. With the turrets gone, we can sneak down the stairs because a Protectron is coming our way. Continuing search for fugitive. But it looks like he's on the other side of a large gap, so we can't get him just yet. After looting the wreckage on this platform, we see that the only way down is to jump from this level to the level below. We see two Mr. Handys patrolling down here. We can hack the first, then hack and deactivate the second, and then scale some nearby steps to hack and deactivate the Galactron. Peering off to the south, we see another turret. Can I shoot it through that gap? <sighs> no, I can't. And I don't want to risk getting its attention, so we'll save that for later. But this wing is clear, so risking our light, we can loot a shelf, and we find a footlocker on the ground. When done, we can move south, where we find a staircase leading up. Climbing the stairs, we come to a split. We can go south, or we can turn around and go north. Here we see the catwalk going off to the west. This is the one with the gap, where we saw that Protectron earlier, okay. Turning north again, we see stairs going down. This is that staircase where we deactivated the Protectron. So turning around, we can follow the stairs up to a platform where we find a novice locked tool chest next to a human skeleton. But at the top, we find no reward, no star core. But, hey, there we go. From here, we've got a great shot of the turret. <sighs> With both destroyed, looks like all that's left is that Collectron. So heading back down, we can follow the catwalk south, and then climb the stairs directly behind him, where we can hack and deactivate him. With that, the room is clear. We can turn on our light and head back down the stairs to see if we missed anything. Sure enough, there's our first aid box on a little mobile cart, but that's about it. So heading back to the top, we find another Nuka Galaxy control terminal here, and beside it, a door to the east. We see that the track comes through the wall here, heading east. Following it around appears to lead to the end. We see a wrecked rocket car on the ground with a skeleton inside. And to continue, we go up some stairs to the north and open a door. And sure enough, this is the end of the ride. We see a Mr. Handy at a console over there, and this room is really well lit. Oh, how are we gonna get over there? Well, keeping our distance, we can creep across the track, and then with his back turned, we can try and sneak up behind. Got him. Turning around, we see another animatronic on a rocket, and this gives us the Nuka Girl costume, the only one in the game. Heading back to that console with the Mr. Handy, we find a Nuka Galaxy employee key and the fifth Star Core. From here, we could go up some stairs to the west. Looks like this is the way out, though. But first, I want to go and explore this door to the northeast. We can unlock it with the Nuka Galaxy employee key. We find ourselves in that room at the very beginning that we accessed by picking that master lock. We looted everything down here, but we didn't go up these stairs. So heading up the concrete stairs, we arrive in a room with a bunch of benches and tables and shelves that we can loot. We find a stash of Mentats in a drawer, another Nuka Galaxy control terminal, and the sixth Star Core in this red console. Next to this is a cap stash next to a Nuka Cola Quartz, and we find another Nuka Galaxy employee key on the second console. On the other end of this is an End of Dungeon steamer trunk, and to the north is a locked door that we can unlock with the Nuka Galaxy employee key. And hey, this brings us to that one room that we saw at the very beginning where we deactivated those two Galactrons. We see a star core back here, but oh no, I can't get through. Daggone it. Well, we'll have to activate one and then step out quickly. Then when he chases for us... Intruder, identify yourself. Hack him again. 
At last, we can sneak into the room and loot the seventh and final star core inside Nuka Galaxy. With that, we've explored the entire ride, and we can head out, down the stairs, and back to the ride's exit. As we climb the stairs to exit, we find a park medallion dispenser behind us to the north. We have to loot this in order to complete the precious metals quest that we got from Nera, and when done, we can go up the ramp to the south and out the door to the east. On the other side, we see that the sun has set. It's super dark. I'm gonna save and then go ahead and change it to daylight just so you can see where we're at. We're on some sort of broken ramp overlooking a portion of the park. There's a warehouse behind us. We see more iBots patrolling. It looks like the only way forward is to go back into Nuka Galaxy and wind our way to the entrance or jump down. Well, going back to my previous save before I changed the game time, we can jump back down to the ground floor and then find a place to wait until daytime. With that, we've completely explored Splashdown, Arcjet G-Force, and Nuka Galaxy. But there is so much more to the Galactic Zone to explore. We'll pick up right here where we leave off in tomorrow's episode. I publish many new videos every single week, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, folks. We've got cows. This is a reference to Mothership Zeta, a Fallout 3 DLC series I recently finished on this channel. I hope you all enjoyed it. You can celebrate that wonderful DLC with this great design that appears on shirts in a variety of colors and sizes. You can also get the design on a bunch of other gear, mugs, posters, prints, pillows, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below where you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with the next episode.